Thank you very much. Uh, His Excellency, uh, Mr. Peter Thompson, President of the UN General Assembly, a distinguished panelist, um, excellencies and friends of wildlife. Uh, it is a great pleasure to be here and we extend our particular thanks to you, President Thompson, for hosting today's important event. And we're also grateful for the engagement of past presidents in supporting the observance of World Wildlife Day ever since its inception in 2014. In just four years, UN World Wildlife Day has become the world's most important global annual event dedicated to wildlife. And in that time, we have gone wild for wildlife, got serious about wildlife crime, had the future of wildlife in our hands, and this year, we listened to the young voices. And I would also like to acknowledge Thailand as being the catalyst behind the proposal to declare the 3rd of March being the date CITES was signed in Washington DC back in 1973 as World Wildlife Day. And as such, today we're also celebrating the 44th birthday of CITES. Excellencies, 3rd March is an opportunity for all of us, no matter who we are or where we are, to celebrate the beauty and variety of the millions of plants and animals that we share our planet with, both terrestrial and as the president has highlighted, aquatic as well, including marine. And while we cherish wildlife in its own right, it also contributes to our own personal well-being, from food to medicine, from culture to recreation. But today, as we've heard from previous speakers, wildlife is suffering from many threats, including the grave and immediate threat posed by illegal wildlife trade, which is worth billions of dollars a year. And this illegal trade, as we've heard, is threatening the survival of both charismatic and, and lesser known species of animals and plants. But it's also threatening people, their livelihoods and their security. And as previous speakers have said, this has been recognized through resolutions adopted by this General Assembly, including through the uh, adoption of the Sustainable Development Goals. The reality is that our generation has not yet succeeded in securing the future of many wild animals and plants. And the responsibility of meeting this challenge will now be shared with the next generation. As Minister Malewa said, if we are to succeed, we must fully harness the innovation and the energy of youth and combine it with the wisdom that comes with experience if we are to make the change we need to see happen. As Executive Director Fedotov just highlighted, the good news is that there is a global collective effort underway to tackle illegal trade in wildlife. And at the global level, all of the necessary elements have fallen into place to effectively combat these highly destructive crimes. Today, there is a vast array of powerful decisions and resolutions on tackling illegal wildlife trade coming from the UN General Assembly, from CITES, the UN Crime Commission, the UN Environmental Assembly, the GEF, Interpol, World Customs Organization, and others. And we are seeing unprecedented levels of high-level political support and international and regional cooperation. One example being what is happening through the International Consortium on Combating Wildlife Crime, of which the UNODC is a part, as is Interpol, World Customs, and the World Bank, along with CITES. And this is about providing coordinated support at a country level to tackle the transnational organised criminal groups who are driving this illegal trade. This support has included how to apply the same tools and techniques that are used to combat other serious crimes, be it the use of modern forensics, enhanced investigation techniques, or tackling money laundering. And just yesterday, Interpol announced the results of Operation Thunderbird, which was a collaborative effort led by Interpol. We'll hear about more today. Excellencies, today we have more mandates on tackling illegal wildlife trade than we ever could have imagined just six years back. And these mandates are critical to direct, guide, and enable states and organisations to take action. Yet this fight is not going to be won in the conference room. It will ultimately be won or lost in the field, on the front line, through the rangers, police, customs inspectors, and local communities. And we believe that action in the front line must be our focus going forwards. Governments, rural communities, civil society, the private sector, public figures and the media all have a role to play in achieving this shared objective. 
As Minister Malewa said, bold decisions were taken on tackling illegal trade in wildlife at the 17th meeting of the Conference to CITES held in Johannesburg, South Africa last year. It was our largest conference ever by a long way and our most successful conference ever. And it is an absolute delight to be sharing the podium again, once again, with the Honourable Dr Edna Malewa, who was a very large part of the success of that event. And Mr President, the success of COP17 included the adoption of Fiji's proposal to bring the mobula or devil ray under CITES trade controls. It's a beautiful animal and it marks the shift in CITES in bringing many more marine species under its trade controls. We now need equally bold concrete actions to implement these outcomes with all of the political, financial and technical support that has been generated over the past six years, converging and translating into direct support to the front line to implement them. Excellencies, we are convinced that if we persist with our collective efforts, we will end the surge in illegal trade in wildlife experienced over recent years. And the figures re re released this morning on the trends in the illegal killing of African elephants shows that while much remains to be done, we are on the right track. To conclude, as we pause to celebrate World Wildlife Day today, we need to do whatever we can as citizens and as consumers, whatever our age, to bring this illegal trade to an end and work for a future where people and wildlife can coexist in harmony. Thank you, Mr. President.